What is up, everybody? Jeff is back. And today we're gonna to be doing pork chops. All right, a couple of really nice, beautiful, thick uh, pork chops here. We're gonna be doing several variations of pork chops. We're gonna be doing an easy, a medium, and a hard variation. <clears throat> For the easy variation, we're gonna be using Italian dressing. For the medium, we're gonna be using this soy sauce, this pineapple juice, and this brown sugar. And then for the hard version, we're going to be using panko breadcrumbs, grated Parmesan cheese, melted butter, garlic, salt, pepper, and Italian seasoning. And then. And they're all going to get cooked exactly the same way. But we're going to start off with the easy version. And that's right, you heard it, one ingredient, Italian dressing. You can get your generic store brand Italian dressing for stupid, dirt cheap. And you know what? Your pork chops and your chicken will always... Thank you for using this stuff. It's one of the simplest, and it's one of my favorite methods in the whole world for cooking pork and chicken. Let me show you the secret of this, right? It's gonna require one ingredient. It's gonna require one tool, other than this knife that I'm using to open this pork chop. Oh. Um, also, Thin pork chops, thick pork chops, bone in, bone out, doesn't matter. The only thing that matters is how you cook it. The oven is the safest, most reliable way to cook pork chops. If you've got a grill, they're great on that too. And for the last version of pork chops we're doing, an air fryer would be baller, but I don't have an air fryer. So the oven it is. All right, so we got our pork chop here. It's beautiful, beautiful thick cut bad boy. Um, this is like a one inch thick pork chop. It's gonna take a while to get all the way through. If I wanted, I could cut it in half, and that would probably be a very economical thing to do that would make everybody in my household happy except me. So I'm not gonna do it. Anyways, it's the Magic Guide, created by Ziploc. Ziploc, if you wanna sponsor these videos, this is your time, this is your calling. Use you a lot on this channel because you make the best sandwich bags. So we're gonna take a pork chop, and we're going to put it in a bag. Boom. Now, if you really want to get crazy with this, you can put salt and pepper on this bad boy. But here's what we're going to do. We're going to take this Italian dressing, we're going to shake it up like it's about to make us money. We're going to struggle to open this thing because we're ignoring the thing that says tear here. I have a knife. No longer struggling. And we're gonna take it, and we're gonna squeeze it in this bag. I don't really have a great camera set up for this. Oh. To be honest, I could have used a much smaller bag because I'm only doing one pork chop this way. But we pretty much just want to make sure that it's covered all the whole time. Here's the other wonderful thing about this. 30 minutes to an hour or so. Put it in the fridge. It'll hang out there and be perfectly happy to hang out there. Until we're done. I gotta let the dog. Now, for pork chop number two, this one's a little bit more complicated. This is what can be known as a bourbon sauce. We're gonna use equal parts brown sugar. I'm using dark brown sugar. You can use light brown sugar, just don't use white sugar. Pineapple juice, which I couldn't find the pineapple juice in the store, but I happen to really like pineapple. So the slices are just gonna be a surprise tool that will help us later. And soy sauce. I generally find name brand soy sauce to be worthwhile. Store brand soy sauce is 
way too salty to be edible. But hey, that's just me. So, we're gonna do the brown sugar first. I happen to have a jar of it here because I also use brown sugar for my coffee. Not because it's inherently superior or anything, just because I like the taste. In this instance, the taste is important. Now I'm gonna scoop. We're gonna be doing half a cup. I'm gonna use this bad boy here so that I can actually scoop it out because well, that's just easier than using the other one. But in the instance that you only wanna use one measuring thing because you know, you only wanna use one measuring thing. Um, always start with the brown sugar because it will stick to your cup if it's had other stuff in it, but it will not stick to the dry cup. See, pretty much empty. Um, but yeah, if it were wet with soy sauce or pineapple juice or whatever, the game over. Didn't get any of that. That'd be useless. And yeah, I know that's a lot of sugar. And pineapple juice is sweet, but soy sauce is salty. And that's really the name of the game here. Let me find my can up there. Um, yeah, I'm just gonna punch this. You can take the lid off. I'm just gonna hole punch it and wrap it up for later. We're not gonna do anything with the pineapple slices right now. And this is just the easiest way for me to get half a cup. We don't normally measure here, but when making a sauce, a sauce is more of a science than an art. So you want to measure because the ratios really matter. It's like mixing a drink, you know? If your ratios aren't good, then your drink isn't good. And the same is true of sauce. You guys can see this, right? I'm just using a knife to pull this off. Uh, I recommend a butter knife, not the sharp one that I'm using, but I didn't go do that, so. Do as I say, not as I do. No, just... Get a cup of this. I actually don't think that... Uh, I went way past half a cup. Okay, well... And then this is going to heat. We're going to just go ahead and do like a medium, medium high. All we're really trying to do is dissolve the brown sugar into the other ingredients. So what that means is that we're going to have to sit here and stir this pot hasn't been on camera because I haven't been paying attention. But that's okay. That's okay. I did nothing but combine the ingredients and put them into this pot. Now, what this is going to give us is a semi-sweet, semi-savory pork chop. So the Italian seasoning pork chop is going to be very savory, very delicious. Um, this is going to be sweeter, more of an Asian style. If I want to go ham on this pork chop here, I could add some ginger to it and a little bit of black pepper and a little bit of red pepper. And then this would give me some salty savoriness. Uh, don't add salt because we're using soy sauce. Um, 
might not end up with a really wild pork chop. But the truth is, you don't have to do any more than marinate it in this. I probably will, now that I've thought about it, because, well, it just sounds good. So I'm going to go ahead and pull my pork chop out here and season it up. But it's just going to soak in this sauce anyway, so... Now, because the sauce is meant to be the highlight and the sauce is going to be this salty, sweet, savory thing, we're going to hit it lightly with this seasoning. So it's going to be a really, really light. Now, I would do red pepper, but my family's not really a red pepper family. So I'm going to do super light pepper. I'm talking like just enough to say that I did it. Really more interested in the ginger garlic but let's be real you know me by now you know that i'm interested in the ginger and the garlic this is going to come on a little bit heavier but well, it's ginger so it'll come out next week And if I were smart, I would season it one side with all the spices, and then I would go to the other one. Remember, keep... This is difficult to see from this angle. Hold on. Keep it pointed up. And from higher up, we'll get you an even spread. And we're really not going to do a whole lot with this. Why? Because the sauce is what it's all about. The sauce what we care about. If I were to tilt this down, by the way, it would just pour. We don't want it to pour. We want it to sprinkle. I'm trying to sprinkle. I'm trying to sparkle like a San Holo song. Okay. And yeah, when my sauce is ready, which will be a minute, because, well, yeah. Um, I'm going to pour that and this into a bag after the sauce cools. Because I don't want to pour hot, hot, hot sauce into a plastic bag. It's just not a recipe for success. I could alternatively pour it into a bowl and put this in the bowl with it. Which might be what I'd do because I don't really want to wait. But we'll see when we get there. I'll be back. Well, I'm back already. That was like genuinely a period of about 60 seconds. But it turns out that making this sauce is really just more about stirring in your brown sugar then heating it up the heating up is important when you heat things up it changes the way that the ingredients bond together as far as the flavor profiles are formed so you want to heat it up but mm, you can see there i still have some brown sugar to do quite a bit. that's not good <clears throat> looks like i was wrong When you pour, don't be scared to spill. If you are, you'll spill. That doesn't mean throw it at the thing. It just means don't be afraid. Okay. Should be good now. Oh yeah, there we go. Water first because, well, liquid first because otherwise we just wash off this dry seasoning from our pork. And we're gonna put our pork in there. Now we really should have let this cool because this is gonna pseudo cook the pork, but it's gonna be okay. It shouldn't be hot enough to really cook the pork because I only used a medium heat. And leave it in there forever. Um, you'll also notice that there is not full submersion here. It's close, but it's not quite. That would be solved if I had smaller pork chops. But it's going to be okay. Mostly I'm just doing this because I'm impatient. And if I were more patient, I would let it cool and I would put it in a Ziploc bag and that would be better. Um, 
you know, just make your sauce in advance and keep it in your fridge for a couple of days and you can use it for pork, chicken, beef, everything. Um, just anytime you need a marinade, just pour some of this over your thing and in you know, a little Ziploc bag and let it marinate for a while. Um, that's pretty warm, I'm not gonna lie. It's tasty though. So yeah, as soon as this cools, I guess I'll put a Ziploc, or not a Ziploc, but some Glad wrap over it or something. And that'll marinate for 30 minutes to a couple hours. Um, this sauce, if you can give it a day, like overnight, fantastic. Very worthwhile. But if you don't have it, aim for 30 minutes. That's a generally good rule for marinating things. 30 minutes is often enough time. Um, if you've got other prep work to do, then you can get your meat marinating right away and then do your other prep work and then put your meat on your thing and that'll usually be enough time to impart some good flavor. But for the most part, just stay for 30 minutes. Anyways, we will see you shortly when it's time for part three. Third version is pork chop. We're doing a Parmesan encrusted pork chop. These first two were pretty simple. This last one's going to be way more complicated, so it's actually going to get two pork chops, but we will hit you back up when we get to that point. See you then. All right, we are back, and there's a lot more ingredients than I remembered. This is way more complicated. We're doing a Parmesan encrusted pork chop. It's very in-depth, so I'm actually going to take off my hoodie and roll my sleeves because um, that's kind of necessary. Oh, I should have done this first. Okay. And, uh, yeah, I'll explain all the parts here that we've got. Most of my eggs sitting out. Yeah. Mm. So we've got a two-step process here. This is about as close as you're ever going to see me come to frying something other than schnitzel. This is the process for frying something. And what we're doing is basically an oven fry. This is where if you have an air fryer, break that bad boy out. Use that for this. Um, you do not want to deep fry or pan fry or shallow fry this. You just don't want to do that much oil in your Parmesan crust. That's just not how you want to interact with cheese. Um, so yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna not do that. I have a rack. Let's see my baking sheet up there lined with foil. I have a rack. If you have a rack, use it for this. It'll get you a better surround of heat onto your food and make it crispy on all sides. If you don't have a rack, don't let that stop you. It's still delicious. I know I've done it before. Um, I haven't used this exact recipe before, but I have done Parmesan encrusted chicken before. It's fantastic. So, two-step process here in front of us here, right? We've got... The dip, the 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 wash, is what this is called. Put some seasoning in it. You can also just season directly onto your meat. But this has just got some garlic salt and some pepper in there. Uh, garlic salt is exactly what it says on the tin. It's garlic and salt. A lot of people do away with the separation of the two and have just garlic salt. I don't generally, because there's a lot of things that I use soy sauce for, and I want garlic and not salt. Um, most people the other way around. They want salt, not garlic. But we're using garlic salt for this recipe. Uh, just a little bit in there, a little bit in here. Uh, pepper, a little bit in here, none in there. We've got lemon pepper in here. We've got onion powder in here. We've got Italian seasoning in here. And Italian seasoning is just an herb blend. It's marjoram, rosemary, thyme, savory, sage, oregano, and basil in pre-portioned ratios. Saves you a lot of time. Very worthwhile. You can sprinkle Italian seasoning into all kinds of stuff and it makes it fantastic, particularly ground beef. Um, and then this is kind of equal parts panko breadcrumbs, back to save the day again, and uh, grated Parmesan cheese. That's that powdery stuff that sometimes clumps together in little balls. That is the jam when it comes to cooking because it melts better and it provides you with a better crust and, you know, it's just overall better for cooking than shredded parmesan cheese shredded parmesan cheese is the kind of thing you sprinkle on a salad um it's not the kind of thing that you use to bread stuff 
So we're gonna mix this up, get it all nice and incorporated. Um, as you can see, it's really not as much seasoning as it looked like. Originally it makes me wanna add more, but I'm sure that it'll be okay because it smells like it'll be okay. Actually, it smells like it could use a little bit more Italian seasoning is what it smells like. Gotta be careful with this though. These will burn because they're just dried leaves. Um, so you don't wanna do too much of those. But I want it to have that flavor, right? Now this is those aforementioned seasonings, one egg, and a little bit of milk. And that's it. That's the magic of what's happening there. And our process here is very, very, very simple. We're gonna take our big boy, and we're gonna get it coated on all sides in this glorious, sticky mixture that makes me really wish I had gloves. And then we're gonna press it into this glorious dry mixture that's gonna make me really wish I had gloves. And we really wanna get this coated all over it, so we're gonna, I'm just gonna get on here and get all about it. Now, I did not measure any of these things because I have a general idea of how much of everything I want. I will say you need one egg and a little bit of milk, just enough to kind of make it a wash and not just an egg. And then for your breading, you want roughly equal parts cheese to um, to breadcrumbs. And that's the secret there. There are a lot of different breadings. There's a lot of different types of breadings like fried chicken and fish and country fried steak and chicken fried chicken. It just, it, the rabbit hole was infinite, right? And anybody who's seen the, the slew of fast food fried chicken places understands that the breading is, is where a lot of people try and put their special spin on stuff. Um, panko is going to be crispier. It's going to be really good for a lot of situations. If you just want like a nice crispy breading, and you don't want to put a lot of effort into how you're frying it. Um, and cornstarch, if you're doing like a flour breading, cornstarch will add some some crispiness, some crunch that you almost always want. Or if you're trying to avoid that, stick to just flour. Um, but yeah, this is, this is pretty good. It's not great, but it's pretty good. Now I am gonna be putting these Oh, melted butter, right? I think I wanted melted butter in this. Yeah, I think I wanted some melted butter in this. That's my bad. It's a little late for that. And to be honest, I don't think it's gonna be that big of a deal. If it is, you will find out. But it should be totally fine. It is gonna make me a little sad. The butter is so good. Um, yeah, I should have I should have had melted butter in my breading, and that would help it stick, and also add a really beautiful color to it when it cooks. Um, is it too late to do it? Kind of. Kind of. Couldn't, I mean, I couldn't exactly clean this off. Uh, everything's stuck to it. And I could brush butter on now, but it wouldn't be quite the same. Um, and if I pour melted butter onto it like it is, I could wash off a bunch of the breading. So we're going to not do that. But we are going to put our other pork chops onto this pan.
and you know, full disclosure, it's only been 20-ish minutes at most, maybe. But I'm on a bit of a time crunch here. I still gotta do these pineapple slices. So. And these are gonna take a while to cook. I'm doing them on 400 most Recipes aren't going to ask you to cook pork chops on 400. Again, patience is a virtue. And if you can do something on a lower heat over a longer period of time, it's almost always better. But in the instance that you're not able to do it, you can just do a higher heat. If I'd started earlier, if I didn't have people who were expecting food when they came home, if I were just a more efficient human being, wouldn't be an issue. Alas, here we are. I'm about to pop these into a 400 degree oven and then we're gonna go on our pineapple slice jam. See you then. All right, everybody, it's been about 45 minutes. This is largely just because these pork chops are super thick. But I'm going to cut one of them open and, you know, basically prove that it's done. Oh, yeah, it's done. You can see that from there, right? Yeah. So, yeah. Now, the color is going to be different on each of them, obviously, because of, well, the fact that they're different. And I wish that I had gotten some butter on these so that they were a little crispier, but... Overall, I'm pretty happy with how they turned out visually, and all that's left to do is find out how good they taste. So, hopefully you guys can leave some comments on that down below. As always, if you have requests or suggestions, leave them there as well, and be sure to like and subscribe to continue supporting what we're doing. See you next time.